We are go for liftoff in T minus 30. Hit the record Italo with Italo's Black Black Radio. How's everybody doing today? I hope everybody's doing fine. And uh, we already have the guest uh, already on here. His name is Kyle. Is however, you may know him as uh, Shirley's dad on TikTok. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, anyways, welcome to the sh- welcome to the show, Kyle. How you doing? Kyle, can you hear me? Let me hold on a second. Something's going, going on. Uh, let me text him. Let me come on. Kyle, if you can hear me, let me know. Or let me just reload this. Maybe. Oh, you know what? Sorry. Sorry, Kyle. Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Can you hear me now? My, my, on my end. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That is. Things happen. No, I know. I, I have to, make I have to like, refresh. Okay. I have to refresh the page, and so it's okay. It can be edited out. But hey, how are you doing? Yeah. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I am great. Uh, so let's let's uh, talk about. So we were chatting earlier, and uh, one thing led to another until we ended up with uh, our father father story, our parents. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was interesting. It was it was very interesting. Sorry, you know, it's like, yeah, a lot of people have a lot of issues with their fathers. Everybody's got their own story to tell. Um, Like I was telling you before, my father. I actually found out who who I thought was my father my whole life wasn't my father. I found that out around 18 years old, um, and it's he was he was an alcoholic guy when he wasn't drinking, but when he was drunk he was just an ass. And he left he left us when we were like eight or nine somewhere around there, um, and then I then I found that out at 18 that he wasn't my father. I met my, I ended up meeting my real dad when I was about 21, 22. Come to find out he was just a big loser, and I really didn't want to hang out with him anymore. Um, he wasn't there when I was younger, and I really needed him, so why did I want him there now? And uh, But all that stuff kind of made me a better father today because me and my oldest son are like best friends, and I have two little ones that I adopted, and uh, being a dad is the biggest thing in the world to me. Hence my name, Shirtless Dad. <laughs> So let, tell tell me about your story about the Shirley's dad. Why why do you choose that name? <laughs> uh, well, this how um I was just I was first on a TikTok. It was just at Kyle P's, um, and that's what it was because I couldn't think of a name. I, I I'm not good at coming up with names or anything like that. So one day I was in my lives. <clears throat> now when I'm in my lives, ninety percent of the time I do not have a shirt on. Um, even when I'm at my house, as soon as I come home from going whatever I go out to do, and I come back home, the first thing I do is take off my shirt. Um, and, and so everybody's used to see me without my shirt on. I'm in my lives all the time with my shirt on. And then I went into uh, another guy's live, this banded legend. He goes, Kyle, you got to change your name to something with shirtless in it. And I was like, you know what? That's actually a pretty good idea. <laughs> and I said, you know what? There's no, there's no greater feeling in the world than being a dad to me. So I'm like, you know what? Shirtless dad. And that's how it came about. All right. So, Yeah. And then not only are you that, but you also have a podcast too. Because uh, I'm so I noticed you. <clears throat> well, we we came across on somebody's live. I forget who it was. <clears throat> and um, I went Chano. to. I think it was Liquid Shano. There you go, Liquid Shano. Correct. Who I, I hope to have uh, on the on my podcast too, because he's got a great personality. He's he's an amazing person, and his podcast was really. He's he actually I look up to him now because. He basically went to the next level, and then he did, you know, the Spotify, the all the other 
um, podcast platform that I was talking to you about <clears throat> because you're doing yep. it on YouTube right now. Yep. So, so just tell me how, it how it, yeah, tell me how that happened because you're talking to, I forget her name, your co-host. Uh, shirtless, shirtless tidbits. I mean, shirtless, oh my God. <laughs> Captain Tidbits. <laughs> I'm like, that's not her name. <laughs> yeah, her, you know, you know, you know. It's funny. Was, we were trying to come up with a name with a sh- for the show, and everybody kept saying, uh, "Oh, it should be shirtless tidbits." So we were like, uh, "We did, we weren't too crazy about it, but like, you know what? Let's give it a try." So we tried to shoot a, shoot an episode with uh, using the name "shirtless tidbits" as the name of our podcast. And I, I shit you not, we sat there for a half hour trying to do a quick little open, and it just didn't roll off the tongue. Trying to say. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Shirtless Tidbits uh, podcast. The shirtless, yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Shirtless Tidbits podcast. And it just, like, I can kind of say it now a little bit, but at the time, she tried to do it. It wasn't working. I tried to say it, it wasn't working. I'm like, you know what? I mm-hmm. don't really like this too much. There's just something about it. It doesn't, it doesn't roll off your tongue cleanly. So I was like, ah, we're, we're, I don't like this. We got to think of something else. Um, okay. So that, that's that's why Shirtless Tidbits came out of my mouth. <laughs> Yeah. So how long have you been doing podcasts, the podcast? We literally just started. Um, we started, uh, I don't know if she was live or I was live, and we were just saying, hey, I really, I just want to try to do a podcast. I see all kinds of different podcasts. They're interesting, they're interesting to listen to. I like to put them on in the background because uh, radio now, I'm not into radio anymore. Nowadays, I'm not into today's music. So my, I'm stuck between... 80s, 90s, and early 2000s is where my music ends. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much all I listen to. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not into the new music. I can't. I don't like it. But so I listen to sports radio all the time. Sports radio does get monotonous after a while. So I was like, so I listen to podcasts now. So I, like, I'll put on a podcast and I'll do things around the house, or if I'm in the shower, I'll throw some of the podcasts on and listen to it. And I was like, you know what? Maybe this is something I could do. Like, try to do a podcast with somebody. So we, one of us were in each other's lives, and I was like, oh, I want to start a podcast. And she's like, oh, I keep saying I want to start it too, but I don't know how, and we don't know what to do and who to do it with. And then finally one day I just hit her up. I said, hey, you want to just try to do a podcast? And that's how it all started. We were three podcasts in. Um, we've done three of them. We've got a fourth one on the back burner we haven't put out yet. We just shot last night. And um, it's just we're trying to see if our niche kind of works. Right. So what are kind of the topics that are your you you've touched so you've touched so far in your podcast? Um, so far we've touched we've kind of we kind of put a little bit of light on anxiety because my my partner that I, I uh, my co-host that I do the podcast with she deals with a lot of social anxiety. Um, even do, she deals with anxiety even on camera and stuff like that. Like even on her TikTok, she's like we were talking about it and she goes sometimes it takes me ten to twenty takes to do a video. And sometimes mm. I can't even get it right, and I have to come back and do it the next day. So when we were mm. talking about this, actually, um, this came to light in, in our podcast. We So the first episode we did was like, hey, let's just do a podcast. So we sat down, we did, we got on a Zoom call, and we shot a podcast. We literally have no talk, topics, a little bit of topics to talk about. We don't plan anything. So it's a little bit different than everybody else. It's just like, hey, let's sit down, let's start talking, and just see where the, the conversation goes. And uh, the first episode we did was great. It was like we sat down and we literally had an hour and 30 minutes of, of time talking. And it was like, wow, holy crap. This, and it flowed nicely. It was, it was no awkward moments. It was um, it just like we clicked really well together. And what's funny is we clicked, but we're two totally different opposite people. She's like in the yeah. West Coast, in California. I'm in Massachusetts. I'm a 41-year-old father. She's 22 years old. Uh, single person, you know what I mean? A male, she's female. There's so many different things about us that are different, but yet we click so well together on our podcast. And uh, that's what a lot of people told us. Wow, it's amazing how well you guys click together. It seems like we've been friends for a while, and we really just met on TikTok recently. Yeah, yeah. Actually, there was a there was a, I think that's the episode that I was listening to, <clears throat> um, where you talk about uh, anxiety and also depression and um, suicide and. It was a this uh, there was a topic about the one guy that committed suicide during the live um, he went live yep. and then he committed suicide so that was that was interesting I didn't see it 
thank thank God. I did, I don't I really don't like yeah. to do that. I, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't see it either. I guess she came across it, but I didn't see it as well. So that's what kind okay. of got us talking about it. Because I just asked her about it, and she kind of let me know what happened and stuff like that. Right. Which is actually because I was talking to I've been talking to different people um, on podcasts and. They all talk about the same thing, how anxiety has increased, obviously, now because of COVID. And uh, yeah. not only that, but also social media and how there's a lot of uh, cyberbullying and there's a lot of trolls online. As, as mm-hmm. It's more prominent now, I think, on either TikTok or Instagram or Facebook um, that kind of veers people away from those platforms. Although I yeah. found well, out actually, that can TikTok I, is, uh, I don't want to cut you way different. I don't want to hold on. Can I, I don't want to. I don't want to cut you off. But I just want to say one thing. I agree with you as far as uh, Facebook and Instagram goes, but I feel like TikTok, the bullying and stuff like that, is not really on there. Don't get me wrong. There's still a very tiny bit of it, but I don't think it's as much as at the other platforms. I really feel like TikTok positive uh, app, and there's a lot of great people on there. A lot of interesting people, and everybody seems to get really get along really well on there. You know what I mean? There's videos. There's all kind of different videos that are out there for somebody. Like my my videos might not be for you, but it's for a different group of people. And your videos are for one type of group, and maybe not for the other. But there's not much negativity. It seems like there's more positive on TikTok than there is any other platform. Right. No, and I agree. And I agree uh, in the sense that I was telling you before how I started with TikTok, and I got a lot of followers mm-hmm. from um, Black Lives Matter and being you know social justice, which is I, I still. Be- I'm still behind what I what I said mm-hmm. and what I posted. The thing is yeah. that when I did that, I noticed how I was attracting negativity towards my page. And so I started transitioning from that towards my poetry, towards my, you know, positivity and towards spirituality and everything along with that. And then I stopped getting followers. <laughs> Which I but kind of like mm, that's disappointing, but you know I the people that you know stuck with me. Yeah, what I can tell you though is this though, your message is still going to be reached out to somebody. Someone's going to pick up that phone yeah. one day and they're going to catch it and they're going to be like, "This inspired me to do this. This inspired me to do that." And like, I don't have many followers. I'm at like uh, one thousand seven hundred something followers, but there's been a couple of occasions where um, I got a message: "Hey, thank you so much for this video." This made me laugh and made me get out of bed today. I'm having a bad, I'm having right. a bad week. I'm having a bad day, or whatever. And it's like this video made me laugh so much. It made me get up and get on with my day. And you know what? And I didn't realize I could, I could do that for somebody. But when I got the message, I was like, "Holy crap!" It made me feel good. I'm like, you know what? This is why I do this kind of uh, this app. It's it's fun. It's like I said, there's a lot less negativity. And hey, you never know who you inspire to do what that day. Mm-hmm. True. So, um, I actually so noticed the way that I look at it is, Jana, because sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, the way, way you what I'm it? telling you is, don't feel bad if you if you're losing followers. Keep putting out your poetry because that's your creative side, your poetry, your whatever it is that you're putting out there. That's your creative side, and guess what? People are gonna that like it are gonna catch on and they're gonna see it, and you're gonna inspire someone one of these days, or you're gonna you're gonna make someone's day where they want to do something to inspire somebody else. Right. And it's never been about the qu- the quantity for me um, as much as the quality. So if I get mm-hmm. two people or, or ten people liking my, my video, and some of them actually go, go all the way back to when I started. So I can see that they're investing their time in getting to know me through my videos, which is not a good way to tr- try to get to know me anyways. <laughs> but mm-hmm. um, because, you know, sometimes you, you put out stuff in, on social media, now, I'm not talking about me, but some people put out stuff uh, on social media that doesn't really represent them, per se. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you get that, but um, yeah, I know that you are, your platform is different, but some people put out, put out mm-hmm. parties or put out, you know, I'm a party person, and look at me dancing. Yeah. And in real life, they're mm-hmm. not, that's not them, you know? <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Well, it's funny. Well, I, I did an interview uh, last night with, with Joe Myers, 86. And um, people, like, you see, so what it is, when you watch these videos, you stop getting a, a, a perception of a person. So if I just keep watching these videos, this is what I think this person is, like kind of what you're saying. 
And what I like about TikTok is you can look at my videos and think I'm this, but you get to see the real me when I go live. So when I'm live and I'm just like you were on today and I'm just kind of cooking up lunch for my kids and making myself something to eat, um, that's me in real life. You know what I mean? That's not a character yeah. kind of played right. when you see these videos. Um, so like yeah, Joe Myers exactly. was saying, he went live on something and he said, wow, someone told me you're not in character. And he's like, I didn't realize I was playing a character. <laughs> but that's what people start to see your videos. They look, they they look at you as a character. You know what I mean? It's like they, this is what right. they see you as. You know what I mean? So then, when you get to see the lives, you're like, wait a minute, that's not him. So I kind of like the aspect where I can, you could do your thing on, on what what inspires you to make a TikTok, whatever it is. It could be the music, it could be the song, it could be the joke, it could be whatever it is that inspired you to make that TikTok. But when you're able to go live, people kind of get to see the real you, and it's not. You yeah. can look at me for who I am, not just this little character. Well, and, and it's like that in Hollywood, right? So you you see people like mm-hmm. Tom Cruise, you see people like Tom Hanks, yep. uh, all the all the Toms of the world, um, and you, mm-hmm. you you think that you know you know who they are by their movies. You see Forrest Gump, and you're like, oh my God, Tom, yep. Tom Hanks is such a sweet person, or mm-hmm. or Tom Cruise is such a badass. Or you know, yeah. Jim Carrey is so funny, and then you see them in real life, and you see them in an interview where they're being vulnerable, especially Jim Carrey, where he's being very vulnerable yeah. about his life and about the dissolution of Hollywood. And you're like, wait a minute, mm-hmm. you're not be- you're not funny right now, Jim Carrey. What's what's wrong with yeah. you? Do something funny. Yeah. And he's like, why do I have yeah, to be exactly. funny all the time? I'm just acting. It's- that's a character, and you are. Yes. You think that I'm a character, and I'm not a character. I love him because it's yes. like, look, <laughs> I'm an actor. Yeah. I, what what you see on TV when I'm acting is not me in real life. That's just me. Like you said, it's just me playing a character, or me. And like like so, just for, like us on TikTok, it's just us playing a little short clip. Because really, TikTok is being an actor. You're doing. It's just compressed yeah. down to like a thirty second to, I mean, a minute to like fifteen second video. Is what what it really is. It's a short, right. a short little video that you're putting up there, and you're just acting for that clip. Well, sometimes it's not acting. Sometimes it's just right. life's going wrong. I'll be outside with my dog. I'm like, hey, check out my dog playing around. And but you just you're acting for a little bit, and it's the same thing, just not a big movie in front of everybody's eyes, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And actually, there was something that I talked to. So there's this guy that I thought I follow. His name is uh, Robbie Cornelius, and he has a self. Self Mastery Radio, um, which is the name of the um, of this podcast or his um, TikTok. <clears throat> so we were talking mm-hmm. about one day, and he was saying how he meets people from his past, like his classmates or family members mm-hmm. that he hasn't talked to in years, and 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 he has to he has to remember, okay, what kind of role was I playing when I was with you? Because I'm not the same person mm-hmm. that I was ten years ago, or five years ago, or even last year, and now yeah. you see me as that person that used to be shy, or used to be a gangster, or used to be a rapper, and and I'm not. Mm-hmm. And so you have to like you have to catch up to with me. To, now he's very spiritual. He's into yoga. He's into uh, meditation, and and mm-hmm. people don't don't get him anymore. He's like I am not that person that you met me ten years ago. And so that was interesting oh, yeah. when he said that. I'm like, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. If I look at myself, just look at myself five years ago, look at myself 10 years ago. Like, I'm 41 now. If I look at myself when I was 20, I'm a totally different person than I was 20 years old. 20 years old, I had no kids. I had no responsibility. And I did whatever I want. And don't, I didn't make the best decisions then. Don't get me wrong. I don't make them all now. But I, at least now when I make a decision, I think about what I'm going to do. Back then, there was no thinking involved. It's like, okay, spur a moment, I'm going to do this. And that's what it was. You know what I mean? So right. we grow up or, or we just get a little different. You know what I mean? We're not, you're never the same for a long period of time, for the most part. Everybody kind of changes through the years. Right, right. So what's one, what's one thing that, that you've noticed that you've changed? Uh, you couldn't, like if you were to meet your 20-year-old today, what would he think of you now? Like how different were you are you now than you were that back then? Um, hold on one second. I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. 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 I'll take the dog. I'll stay. Hold on one second. I gotta go. My dog's freaking out. I'm sorry about that. No problem. It's okay. Let me get him outside. 
We're gonna put Come some on. elevator music uh, right now for you. <laughs> Come on, side buddy. Right. Um, I got a girl here. from Ipanema. My we're gonna put on. Oh, I see. All right. Yeah, she's doing a class, and the puppy was freaking out. Okay, buddy. Okay. All right. So, um, if I was twenty, if twenty-year-old me is looking at me now, he mm-hmm. would. Uh, He'd look at me and be like, damn, you're a fucking bitch guy. What are you doing? you got kids now. You're, you're, he, he, would, he would look at me and laugh, really. Because back then, I was, my, my thought back then was, my life's my life. I don't want, I'm not doing anything for anybody. Um, I'm just here for me, and I'm doing what I want to do. So, you know, it, it was, okay. you know what I'm trying to say? I, I was young and dumb. You know what I mean? It was, I was enjoying my life at that time. You know what I mean? And no one else right. is. Right. I didn't have a girlfriend at the time. And you know what? I look at it now, though, as, as dumb as I was at 20 years old, I was smart. Because I saw a lot of my friends having kids. And I was like, dude, why do you want to have kids? Because now you have a responsibility. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm like, at that, at that time, it wasn't for me. But then I grew up. Like By the time I was like 24, 25, I was like, hey, wait a minute. I want to have a kid now. You know what I mean? I want to. It's time for me to grow up. I'm done partying. I'm done trying to sleep with every chick that I meet. It, it, it was like, it was time to get boring, if that makes any sense. And it was like, it's time for me to settle yeah. down and see a different part of life. You know what I mean? Um, and that, and that, one of, that was one of the best decisions. I made a lot of dumb decisions, decisions in my life, but one of the best decisions was not having a kid until I was ready. Because like we were talking before, my oldest son, mm-hmm. he's, he's my best friend. He's 15 years old, and we are legit best friends. And we have such a great uh, relationship. It's the greatest thing in the world. I, I love having that relationship with my son. No problem. So, That's awesome because, so, like you know, said, there's yeah. not that many, there's not many role models growing up for me as what a good parent. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there was, there was a few family members that I was looking up to like, okay, that's a great dad. He's, you know, he's provided for the family. He's very you know, homebound. But for the most mm-hmm. part, like my parents uh, and and many more parents that I saw growing up were not a good example for me. So, no. Hey, I was in the same boat. Yeah. Like I said, my dad left when I was young. My mom wasn't about a kid. She was about her boyfriend. So we were always put on the back burner mm-hmm. for her boyfriend. Um, so we yeah. really didn't have that structural household. Um, what I looked up to, what, 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 was, what worked for me was I looked up to coaches. Because I was an athlete, I played basketball, I played mm. football, I played mm. baseball. I played many different sports when I was a kid. Um, I was mm. always good enough to play every sport and get playing time, but I was I was a stud on the football field. So that's where I, you know what I mean? So I always looked up to my coaches. Yeah. And my kids now play baseball, and I love coaching. And that, when I first started coaching, it was I wanted to be on the field with my kid. I didn't have that when I was a kid, so I wanted to be on the field with, with my son. Mm. But as you start doing it, I got pleasure out of watching these other kids grow playing sports. You know what I mean? If, you know, if you can teach a kid one thing that they, that they can carry with them for the rest of their life. Like for me, like Coach Walker. Coach Walker was my teacher in school. I loved that guy. He was one of my favorite coaches. He didn't take my shit because I was, I was a punk when I was a kid. You know, I, with no father, mom not really paying attention to us, you, you turn to do, do stupid shit. You turn to be a punk. But he never took my shit, and he never yelled at me either. This guy would never yell. He'd just be looking at you like, you want to be a dumbass? This is the consequence. So if you want to be late to practice, go run. You want to be a dumbass at practice? Go run. He goes, you can run until I get tired, and I'm not going to get tired watching you run. So there was, that was the, um, the structure I needed. So I got the structure in sports, right. which I carried into my real life. I'm never late to anything anymore. When I start, when I'm running late, I start getting anxiety, and that all goes back to being sports. I, I was hate that. To be there on time. I, I'm the same way. I hate I hate people that are not punctual to me. They're not mm-hmm. uh, mature. They're not. They don't care for the other person that's waiting. Um, yep. don't, don't even text me. You don't even tell me. I hate. I hate. I hate it. <laughs> oh, trust me. Trust me. It drives me nuts. So, but like so, like I was saying, being a coach now. My son's now 15, so a lot of the kids that I've coached that's his age, so we've, I started coaching a lot of these kids when they were four or five years old in T-ball. Now I'm watching these kids play. I coached them all the way through Little League. Some of them I coached in Pony League. Now I'm watching these kids in high school, and it's like – and sometimes they come up to me. There was uh, 
one girl that used to play with the boys, she came over. She was like, we were. I remember the first night when we were in uh, Little League. It was like I taught their twelve year old season. <clears throat> I'm one. Like I, I work with the pitchers a lot. My son's a pitcher. And I'm like, guys, listen. When you're pitching, you guys got to calm down. You got to take a step back, take a deep breath. When you feel things are starting to unravel, just step back, take a deep breath. You have the ball in your hand. Control the game. So if you're getting all worked up, take a second, step off the mound, step back, take a deep breath, and relax. And that works in real life, too. When things are coming at you fast and mm-hmm. you're not sure what to do, just take a step back and, and take a deep breath. So we were playing them, and it happened to be <clears throat> a game my son was playing really well. They, we ended up, we were down one run, two men on base, two out, and the kid in front of my son was at the plate. It was three balls and no strikes. And she lo- it was funny because she looked over. She said her nerves were going. She looked over at me. She saw my son on deck. She goes, I knew I couldn't walk this kid because Kyle could not come back to the plate again because his first three place appearances were home runs. She's like, I knew I couldn't face him again with the bases loaded because we were going to lose. She said, I took a step back. I took a deep breath. I got back on the mound. And she, and she ended up striking the kid out. And she goes, Coach Kyle, that's because of what you taught me. I was like, ah, I wish you didn't listen to me that one time, but – it was, but in the back of my mind, it was like, that was pretty cool because she realized after all the times I've said it to her, she actually tried it and it actually worked for her. And it's like, that's something she'll be able to carry with her for the rest of her life. And right now it's a joke to her. Amazing. Like, ah, Coach Kyle, you told me that a million times. But when she gets older and she does that one day, she can be like, holy shit, that's something Coach Kyle taught me. And to me, that's the greatest feeling in the world. Like, mm. if you just teach these kids something they can use later on, it's awesome. And like I said, I, I love, now these kids are all in high school and I'm, I go to all these kids' games, and I check them out when I can, when I have time to, because I have my own kids. But it, being a coach, like I said, was a was a big structure in my life, and I enjoy doing it, helping these kids out. Yeah. That's great. Because, um, yeah, <clears throat> like when I think about my upbringing, because I was raised by, by nuns <laughs> in my school. But mm-hmm. there were some teachers that were not, uh, no, they were not in non, non-habits. Uh, or whatever, yeah. And uh, they they taught me a lot of uh, about life, especially my mm-hmm. uh, my English teacher was pretty cool. She was really chill. Um, I, and I remember a few of them, like my psychologist. Um, she became really. Um, she was always emotional. <laughs> I would make fun of all mm-hmm. my teachers back when I was. I was the same way. I was. I, I was a little bit of a punk, but I was a smart yeah. ass. And but yeah. I appreciate them now because I'm like you know what I was smart ass they had the patience <laughs> to deal with me yeah. and and they they allowed me to be creative because I was in every performance in every you know I was I was on stage all the time playing a character and now that I look back I'm like you know what they allowed me to be myself and they allowed me to yeah. be just as creative and crazy and and obnoxious <laughs> as I could be. Yeah, and so hey, thank you, thank you, teachers. They, they, yeah, the coach, coaches, teachers—they they play a big role in a lot of people, kids' lives that they don't realize it. Well, maybe they do realize it, and uh, but they these pa- these kids that don't have parents at home, don't have a strong home, they 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 end up being role models if they like it or not, and they make the difference in these these kids' lives, and it's awesome for them to do. It. I I give my hats off to them because they're doing stuff and they don't even realize it, and. Teachers nowadays, they don't make good money in high schools and stuff like that. So they, they're doing it because they love doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how, how's that, how like have you been now? Is, uh, is being transitioned now to, well, I think your your wife is teaching, or your, your wife is a nurse, right? But I think uh, yeah, she's now nurse. gone to vir- the virtual uh, learning now. How's that, mm-hmm. how, how, how has that, you know, affected you or your kids or... Um, well, like right now, it's like it's only part time learning because it's like she's working and she has to take the classes for the for the for the job specific job she's doing. Um, <clears throat> as far as it goes for us, the, the the homeschooling is a pain in the ass for the kids. It's a little bit better this year now that they place in their and they're kind of structured a little bit because la- at the end of the year last year it was like okay, no more school. We're gonna try this remote learning thing, and they were just feeding kids papers to do, and that and that, that meant nothing. And it was kind of pointless, but now there's like a little bit of structure to it. But it, so it's come a long way already. Um, I think it's hurting kids right now as far as um, mm-hmm. social, socially. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not they're not interacting with people as much as they would if they were in school. 
Um, so I think that's going to kind of hurt this, this generation a little bit. It's a, kids nowadays are already bad enough with all the electronics, everything's text. And do you have a, I noticed, I noticed this a couple of years ago. Um, my buddy was having a wedding. All the older people were all in circles talking to each other. And all the younger people are mm. sitting at the table texting away to each other. They're sitting right next to each other. And they're all with their faces in the phone, and they look up and laugh at each other. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? They're standing right – they're sitting right next to you. Why are you not talking to them? Right. But, right. Uh, so, that, like I said, it's a little bit difficult. Uh, with kids around, she's trying to do their classes. Mm-hmm. Like, once they're done with school, they're, she's still doing the classes. It's kind of tough to kind of keep the kids quiet. But, you know, you got to make it work. Right. Well, and I see, I see, I see. The gener- our generation is different. Like I was, I grew up in the seventies. <clears throat> so for me, yep. the first twenty five years of my life, I didn't have no internet, no cell phone, no distraction of that sort. And but now, yep. now it's now they're giving this uh, five year olds or six year olds a phone with internet connection, and so it's. I don't blame the kids. I blame the parents. Yep. Um, <laughs> sorry, parents that are doing that, but, uh, no, it's true. But that was, but even yeah. as a parent though, it's hard to keep the kids away from it because they see other kids doing it. So they want to do this. Right. They just like when we were kids, we, if we, if we saw kids, I don't know, like I, I, when I was younger, I'll say this, when I was younger, I had, I was like at that age where the kids were either younger than me or older than me. So I wanted to hang out with the older kids. Obviously they were smoking weed. So guess what I want to yeah. do? I want to go hang out with the other kids and smoke weed because that's what they're doing. So nowadays, they, if I see the kid sees the other kid with a tablet in his hand, he's like, hey, Dad, I want that too. And you can, you can only fight it so long, and you're like, ah, okay, here, have a tablet. You know what I mean? So it, 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 it's, it's tough. Right. And also what they're seeing on, on, you know, on social media or on TV or <clears throat> anywhere because it's, the exposure is just so much, you know, easier. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, it's weird. I get overwhelmed by it, so I don't know how they feel. I, I get overwhelmed by it, too. Like I said, we're doing, like, with my podcast, we're trying to figure out how to get to different platforms. I'm kind of tech tech illiterate, so I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm trying to learn how to, like, A, edit videos or get onto other platforms with our podcast. And... um. Some of these kids, once they well, get older, they're going to know how to do it if from need, watching. If you, need, if you need any help from me, trust me, uh, we can we can get you there. We can get you to other other yeah, platforms. We'll because I see for sure. I mean, um, yeah, uh, we have to help each other out, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, definitely. That's, guess what? That's why I was back to being TikTok. That's what I like about TikTok. A lot of people are, and we met on TikTok, and you're willing to help me out with my pod, even though you have a podcast as well. You know, like, hey, I got a podcast, so I don't want to help you out. It's like, hey, I got a podcast. Let me show you how to venture off into the other platforms so you can get your stuff out there. Because me and you, yes, we have a podcast, but it's two totally different things. And and uh, you never know who's going to want to watch and stuff like that. And that's what's great about like what's great about TikTok. Though. Everybody's willing to help each other out. Yeah, and I think that that uh, doing podcasts for well, as long as I have been doing it, I've been doing it for over ten years. Uh, and it's, mm-hmm. it's progressed, obviously. It's, it's, it wasn't what it was 10 years ago. But uh, yeah. I, I was able to find my niche. I was able to find my voice. I was able to uh, mm-hmm. come out of my shell. And, and now that I've been doing it so long, I now see it as a way to communicate a message. Like we're communicating a message right now to the listeners. Mm-hmm. Right? And there's a pl- it's a yep. platform. Uh, that's, that's the way I protest. That's the way I express myself. That's the way I vent sometimes. Or that's the way I'm helping myself. And then I, therefore I'm helping others. So I see it as a way of communicating to an audience, you know, and uh, it may not be, you know, millions or Ks or whatever. But hey, somebody's listening. Mm. So somebody's listening. Why, exactly. why, what can they get out of it? So that's why I see it. And that's. And that's one of the things TikTok helped me with. I would have never have wanted to do a podcast before, but doing TikTok and stuff like that kind of broke me out of that show. Like, like when I was talking to Kevin Tigbitz, I played sports my whole life. I can play sports with a bunch of people watching me and would never have thought twice about it. But if I had to go on <laughs> stage and do something, or, or if I had to do something in front of a camera where I had to talk or, or do something, 
I'd be shitting mm. out of my pants, man. I'd be like, uh, even doing this podcast, like doing this podcast with you right now, I would, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it uh, a year ago before TikTok. So TikTok mm. kind of helped me get out of the shell of being nervous of talking to somebody on a mm. podcast or talking in front of a camera or something like that. I could talk to you at face to face while we're sitting at my house or something like that. I could talk to you in somewhere else if we're face to face and just bullshit. But now all of a sudden I'm on a podcast, I'd be like, uh, 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 uh. so. <laughs> right, like, uh, and actually, that's what I'm, I'm kind of nervous that TikTok's going to get banned in the U.S. I don't know what's going to happen. You keep hearing it's going to get banned. It's not going to get banned. Mm. It would kind of suck if it does yeah. because I think it, I think it helps a lot of people out with whatever it is that help the anxiety, social anxiety, or whatever it is. I've noticed right. it helps a lot of people out. So I hopefully it sticks around because there's a lot of positive that comes out of it. Right, and uh, yeah. Especially with with suicide prevention too, because there's a lot of uh, messages out there that I've I've been noticing mm -hmm. um, how they're helping out people that are going through it. And I think uh, tidbits I was uh, was saying that she how she reached out to people that were struggling and how she actually helped them from doing what they were they were gonna do just just by calling them, just by reaching out to them, like hey, if you're going through something, please call me, please you know, pick up the phone, uh, we can video chat, yeah. we can, you know, and walk, walk your, walk, walk out of it because, uh, this is real. The depression is real. And, and it's, yeah, it's, especially with the veterans too, you know, I see a lot because I was talking yeah. to some, some veterans, um, a couple of, uh, episodes ago, the show is called Fox, the Foxhole, Foxhole podcast, because they're talking about, you oh, know, yeah, I saw that. war and yeah. Uh, so basically, these these are, these are actors that they used to be. Two of them used to be uh, in this, in service, and mm -hmm. they they uh, basically are reaching out to people because they say that 22, 22 veterans a day commit suicide, and it's just as a statistic, statistics out there. And so they're by doing the podcast, they're reaching out to veterans who have no no platform to discuss their yeah. struggles, their PTSD, their their war stories that they have, or, or maybe just a random anecdote, you know? So mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just a movement going on. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. And uh, well, our podcast, what we're trying to do is, don't get me wrong, we're trying to have fun and we want to talk about our own stuff. But uh, also what I... It, once we get big enough, we can stop really, like we said, we talked about the suicide prevention. And we put a number up there for everybody. And we talk about social anxiety and we want to talk about other things as well to kind of get messages out for people. Um, so what we're trying to do, like we're having fun with, so we want to have fun with our podcast, but we also want to put a message out there. Like sometimes like kind of put um, awareness out for other things. But in order to do that, we got to get the show big enough where we have eyeballs on it. So we're going to try to, get it as big as we can, try to get people eyeballs on the show. And then once we get a lot of eyeballs, we can kind of stop putting in more stuff and we'll have guests on that have um, strong views on, on different awarenesses and we can get it out, the, the message out there for people. Great. That's so, our, that's, yeah, that's our ultimate goal. Whoever, okay. <clears throat> yeah. So whoever's listening to the show, I'm actually put a link to your, to your YouTube channel and your podcast. So if you're listening to this mm -hmm. on YouTube, um, I'm going to put it down below and also any, um, any other platform, whatever you're listening to, I'm going to try to put it on um, this, the description. So click below. You'll be able to find um, Shirtless Dad and Shirtless Tidbits. It is hard to say Shirtless Tidbits <laughs> without... No, 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 that, yeah. no. <laughs> that, well, right now we don't have... Right now we don't have our own... YouTube channel right now uh, on her YouTube channel, oh. which is Captain Tigbit. We're in the process of trying to figure out how to make our own YouTube channel for our show. Right now, the show's called the TikToks Community Podcast, and the reason why we call okay. it the TikTok Community the TikTok Community Podcast is a we're coming from TikTok. We're both we both started off with TikTok as far as being out there in right. front of everybody, um, and that's how we came together. And community is we want to have a show where it's we're, everybody's involved, so we want to have a, as many guests as we can have on from TikTok or wherever. Um, it's one big community is the way we look at TikTok. And there's different parts of communities. Like yeah. I, 
a big part of um, the bearded community. So we're a bunch of us bearded guys. We all follow each other, and we all um, help each other out with growing. And the, like I said, the, the bearded community is great. Like we're all very friendly with each other. We all hit each other up. We're always talking to each other on Instagram, Messenger, besides TikTok. It also, we all became friends on TikTok, and now we're kind of reaching out to each other now. And so, like, that that's our community. Yeah. But, like, as the more we talk, to, like, we're out there, we, we start to become part of other communities. And that's why we came up with the – that's why we called mm-hmm. – we, we, we added the word community to our podcast because we're one big community, and we're all just kind of together having fun and trying to get our messages out. Yeah, and it, make, it makes perfect sense. You're, we're a community, and that, that's one thing about TikTok. Like you're saying, it's a it's a community a community culture. So you're gonna find people mm-hmm. if you're going through depression, if you're going through anxiety, if you're going through uh, just COVID <laughs> um, yeah. traumas or whatever. You're gonna find your niche. You're gonna find them out there. And uh, if you want comedy, if you want to just laugh. Like there's a lot of comedians, comedians on too. So you'll be able mm-hmm. to find anything on TikTok, not just uh, yep. WAP dance or whatever challenges. But there's a lot more going yep. on on TikTok. But it, if it, if it wasn't for TikTok, we wouldn't be talking right now. Exactly. If it wasn't for TikTok, right? if it wasn't for TikTok, me and Captain Tibbets would never have a show together. Like I said, she lives in the West Coast. I'm over here on the East Coast. You don't get this with Facebook. You don't get this with Instagram. Um, right. Right. So, like I said, me and you ended up being on the same live as um, Liquid Shano. We both we kind of like his stuff, so we're both watching it. And then all of a sudden, we realized. I think you reached out to me, started to follow me because I said something about my podcast to him. And then, oh, here we are. Right. Here we are. That's how it happens. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up, Kyle, because we have like three minutes to go, but. Is there any last okay. words you want to say um, to the audience? Yeah. Uh, if you guys could, come check me out on TikTok. I'm shirtless underscore dad. You can always also check me out on uh, Instagram, uh, KJP underscore 1979. And check out our podcast, please. Check it out. Uh, after you watch it, drop a comment in below. To let's, let us know what you think about it. Maybe let us know something you want to talk about. It's a uh, YouTube channel. Right. Awesome. <clears throat> so we're going to talk later about, about you getting you on the other platforms because I'd like to help you with that. Yep. Uh, but anyways, uh, Kyle, it, it was great. It was great talking to you. And I'm sure we'll have a part two or part three or an, a series of uh, talks about life. Uh, but in the meantime, okay. guys, okay. you didn't see this coming. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, Wait, and thank you very it. much for having uh, me on your show. I really appreciate it, and uh, like you said, we'll be talking. We'll we'll do more. Cause this was fun. We are go for liftoff in T minus thirty. Hit the recording.